everybody welcome back to my channel and my tutorials and today I have a new tutorial for you something totally different something I've never done and something that's just for fun a couple of weeks ago I did a shoot with a friend's daughter we did a snow white theme it was just for fun and I posted some of the images on my Facebook you may have seen them if you follow me on there and I was playing around with one of the images and I was thinking about how I wish we had an apple tree and how I wish we had a sky and so I started to do some composites and playing around and I came up with just this really fun digital art type of image I don't know if you can see it but it's got a, like a painted type of texture to it and it's just for fun it just looks like digital art and I figured that had I post this on Facebook that I would get so many questions about it so I thought I would go ahead and do a quick tutorial hopefully this is quick I'm gonna make it as quick as I can and show you how I did it I don't want it to be too long now when I did the original image it was like four hours that it took me but that was mostly because I was playing around trying new things and so I'm going to try to make this tutorial as short as I can. I'm going to show you the basics of what I did, just some tips and some tricks and things that you can incorporate if you wanted to attempt a type of composite image like this one. So this was the final image you can see here. And let's start from the original. And this is the original. This is the image that I used to create the final image. So you can see that there's a lot of things in here that we're going to have to do so let's get started and the first thing we're going to want to do is duplicate our layer always duplicate your layer so that way you always have so that way you never mess up your original you can always go ahead and start from the beginning if you needed to if you messed up you could go ahead and delete it and start all over so always have a background copy so the first thing we want to do is add the sky now you want to go ahead and select the area where you want your sky so hit your selection tool Make sure that you have the one with the little plus here selected so that way you can select as take as many selections as it takes to select the whole area so we're going to start from the corner here and come on down now i'm not really too worried about the grass line down here because if you saw it in the final image i added some grass so this is all going to be covered up anyway but i want to try to get down into the hollows here so that way there's nothing showing through the grass obviously you want to make sure that you get your subject now this is going to cut our head off a little bit, but we will go back and fix it. Right now I just want to get the majority of it selected. Come on down, come on over, go on up. That's pretty good. Now we want to bring her head back. So come on up to your little minus here. This is going to take out whatever you've accidentally selected. In this case it would be her head. We want to make sure we get her ponytail, her bow, and her hair, and the outside of her cape, whatever this is. Now I'm not going to worry too much about this because this is just frizz and I would edit that out anyway so I'm not worried about it as long as we have her ponytail and her cape and all of her intact I am happy. So here's the selection that we've made. I'm pretty happy. I think I'm going to go ahead and I kind of want to bring this down a little bit but I don't know what that's going to do. Let's see. Just a little bit. Alright, that's pretty good. Okay. Now the next thing you want to do is feather your edges. So you want to go to select, modify, feather. Now I keep mine at 5 pixels. Now what this is going to do is it's kind of going to make the edges of your selection a little bit more opaque, kind of like blurry, so that way it blends in a little bit better. So you don't want to make it too large or you're going to have, it's going to leave like a, a it's going to leave a line, a line around your selection and you don't want that. So keep it around 5 pixels if you can. Hit OK. Now the next thing you want to do is get the selection on a separate layer of its own. So you're going to go up to Layer, New, Layer via Copy. Now what that's going to do is that's going to bring the selection that you made on its whole new layer, a separate layer all by itself. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to add this guy. Now you can go online, you can download overlays for free, I'm sure, or there's such a huge selection out there to buy from. I myself have one set of sky overlays that I purchased a few years ago. I bought them from Kansas Pitts. She has the most beautiful sky overlays and such a huge selection. I will link her shop down below if you are interested. This is one of her skies here. I just put it in this separate uh, folder for the sake of making this video so I didn't have to run all over the place looking for all the different images. But this is one of her skies. And for the life of me, I can't even remember what set it was. It was one of her first sets, and it was the only one that I purchased. There were so many skies in them, and I just have never even gone through them all. I don't, 
I don't usually use sky overlays. I bought them just for those rare occasions when I needed them and they've helped me a couple of times. So now that you've got your sky in place, hit your check. And what we're going to do is come over here to your sky layer, right click and hit create clipping mask. Now, as you can see, that puts the sky right into the selection that you selected. And now we have our sky. Now some of the lines, as you can see around here, are a little off, which we will fix in the end. The first thing I want to do in this image is just get all the composites together and then we will go through and clean it up at the end, okay? So yes, I, I know that some of the selections are off and we will fix that and I will show you. We will do that with cloning. Okay, so now the next thing that I want to do is bring in the grass that I placed in here. And what I did for that is, you know what, actually before, before we do that, I want to show you how how to make your sky blend a little bit better. You want to, usually I go through the layers when I'm done and start the blurring, but let's do it as we go. So let's add a little bit of a blur to the sky just to make it look a little more realistic. Just go up to filters, blur, Gaussian blur, and you just want to add a little bit of a blur, probably around, eh, that's probably pretty good. Click OK. All right, that's pretty good. If we need more, we can always go back and add some more. But for right now, we're going to leave it at that, I think. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my grass. This is the image I'm going to work with. This is one of my own images that I actually took the same day of that shoot. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull it over. You can see it covers my image. I'm just going to hit check mark. You can see it's on its layer. I want to add a layer mask. Then I'm going to hit Control I, which is going to invert the mask, basically hide the mask, and so we can paint it on where we want it. So you can see now that it's black, you want to use a white paintbrush, and we are going to go in, and I'm just going to paint it on down here, where I want the grass to be. I can bring it up, like I said, and we're going to cover all that up there anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. Now I made this image just a couple of days ago, so I'm trying to remember everything that I did, so bear with me if I have to go back and repeat something or backtrack. <laughs> I know I covered up her legs a little bit to make it look like she was standing in the grass. Pretty sure it's about how I did it. Um, I want to make my brush a little bit smaller though, and I want to kind of go in here around her dress because this down here, like between her legs and stuff and around the edges, we don't want there to be any kind of different looking grass showing up there. And then I'm going to go back in with just my black brush just to kind of make sure that I get it off of the basket. And there we go. But I'm going to leave it on her legs because I want it to look like she's standing in the flowers. Okay, so there's that layer done. Now, the next thing I am going to do is add the weeds here in the background. This is the image that I used here. Now, I downloaded this online, and I downloaded it for free. It was a free stock image, and I can't remember where I downloaded it from because I searched, like, so many different images before I found one that I liked and one that was free. So, I you're just going to have to Google whatever it is that you need. Like, I think I searched free grass image or free grass stock image or something like that. I can't really remember. I'm going to pull it over, drag it over. Okay, we're going to start on this side. We're going to size it to where we want it. It's probably not going to look exactly like the original image because I worked four hours on that image and I'm not going to remember exactly, exactly everything that I did. I want it to overlap on her just a little bit because I want it to look like it's coming up behind her. We'll, we will erase it off of her later, but that should be pretty good. I want to cover up all those lines in the back. Hit OK. We're going to add a um, layer mask here so we can erase some of these lines. And with a black paintbrush, I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to kind of just erase this harsh line. And yes, the grass is a different color. We will change that and I will show you how to make it match here in a few minutes. I'm going to go in here and we want to obviously erase it off her. I'm going to have to go over just to see where the line is. Okay, now I'm going to go back in with my white brush so I can get in as close to her as I can because I want the grass to look like it's behind her and not like it's in front of her. And it should be pretty good. I'm like leaning in like an old lady like I can't see. 
that should be pretty good. Okay. So I'm trying to think. I think that looks pretty good. We can go back and fix it if we need to, I'll make any minor adjustments. I'm going to go back in, grab the same in image, drag it on over, and we're going to do the other side. Expand it to fit the size you want. Make sure that it's kind of on the same same uh, plane as trying to point to with my finger. No, <laughs> you can't see my finger. So <laughs> make sure that it's on the same plane as the other side. Overlap it a little bit so it looks like the grass is coming up behind her. I want to make sure it's the same um, height. Remember you're going to be erasing the line down here so you wanted to bring, make sure it's coming down just a little bit. Um, that looks pretty good to me. I think I think I might pull this off just a little bit to make sure it hits the edge. Okay, hit the check mark, go in, add your layer mask, go in with your black brush and erase it off her. I'm going to go over a little bit so I can see where my lines are. Go back in with my white brush, lean in like an old lady, and I should really have my glasses on for this. <laughs> Get the edges the best that I can. Okay. And then go back in with the black brush and I want to erase this harsh line down here. This line it can be such a pain to blend. Okay. Alright, that looks that looks pretty good. Now obviously the first thing that we're going to notice is that the grass behind her does not match the grass in front of her. We're going to fix that. So we're going to go in with a hue and saturation layer. Now before we even ad adjust anything, go ahead and right click and create the clipping mask. This is going to make sure that it's only affecting your grass. Now right now we're only working on this side because we can only work on one layer at a time. So what we're going to do is we're just going to play with the sliders until the grass matches. And I found that just taking down the saturation and making it a bit darker, I'm not really playing with the hue at all, I don't think. Eh, maybe a little bit. I'm just really taking out the saturation. That matches, that matches pretty good actually. Um, you can see that that pesky line is a lot more pesky than it was in the original. You gotta also remember that in this image at the end we're going to add like painting effects. So if you have a little bit of harsh lines it's not really going to show. Now if you don't want to add the painting effects at the end then you're going to have to take more time to blend your lines. But for the sake of not sitting here for four hours making a tutorial, I'm not going to do that. So we have the grass that matches here pretty good. Maybe it needs a little bit more color. I feel like maybe the slider was good where it was. It's pretty good. Okay, so now we have it on this side and we need it on this side. So all we're going to do to save ourselves time is right click, duplicate the layer, hit OK. We're going to bring it down. So it's on top of this other grass layer. And it's doing that because it's not, it doesn't have yet have a clipping mask. So make sure you right click and hit clipping mask. And then there you go. Now the grass blends in pretty nicely. The color, why is this, this pesky little line here? You could go in, part of the reason it's doing this is because the grass is more blurry here than it is in the back. So one of the things that you could do is make sure that this, that your grass here is selected, your grass layer, not your mask, but your grass layer. Come on up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and blur. We don't want to blur it that much, just a little bit. Maybe to make it blend in a little bit better. So we have that on like what? I want to maybe drop it down to like three is a little bit better. Okay, so now we have that on like three pixels. Go back up to your other grass layer, making sure that the grass layer is selected and not the mask layer. Blur, Gaussian blur. Same number should still be up there at three and hit OK. Now that does help um, quite a bit. But if you're doing this for the sake of just a composite, you're going to have to go in and probably clone and really tidy up those lines. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is add our apple tree. So I'm going to go down here back to my little folder here and we're going to add our apple tree. Now this is also a free stock image. I searched apple trees for I don't even remember how long to find an apple tree that had like a white background or a black background or a transparent background or something that I could use where I didn't actually have to pull the tree out of the image. So drag it on over. We're going to have to adjust it to the size. I know it looks funny now, but it, it when once you uh, set it, it, it doesn't look like that. 
we want it to be we want it to look realistic in size so I want the image this to be right about here and I think uh, let's pull up the original image and see where we kind of had this like where the branch is here we kind of want that over here so we're going to pull it up just a little bit and I think size wise it's pretty good so we're just really going to have to work with bringing it up a little bit maybe making it a little bit bigger that should be pretty good that should be pretty good okay gonna hit the check mark and as you can tree, see it looks more like a tree now um, we're gonna have to set the blending mode I believe I sent it to multiply yes I did okay so multiply is going to make the rest of that background disappear except for some edges here which you add a layer mask and just like everything else just go in and erase those pesky edges it's kind of there's a little bit of noise in this for some reason but I'm not too worried about it because like I said we're going to be giving it a painting effect so it's not even going to show so I'm not too worried about it um, that line is going to drive me crazy okay Anyway, so here we have our apple tree. Now we want to go in just like everything else and blur it a little bit to make it blend in a little bit more. I have this selected here. I'm going to go in and go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I don't want to blur quite that much. I want it to be a little bit lower than that because I kind of want the tree to stand out a little bit. So 1.9, that's pretty good. Hit OK. Okay. Now. If you're doing just a composite and you want this tree to look more realistic, as you saw in the original, the original um, finished product here, I add sunflower up here in the corner. And you can't really tell, but this right here was actually a shadow that I had added. And I, I feel like it doesn't really matter if you're doing the painted version because you can't really tell it's a shadow. But if you were doing a composite, you would probably want to go in and add a shadow into this into the tree and for the sake of this tutorial I'm not going to show you how to do that it's it's um it's takes a little bit of a little bit of time but anyway so we have all of our components that we want for our image and I'm looking around and I keep thinking that I'm forgetting something I know that the grass needs to be blurred just a little bit more Okay, now all of our composites are in place. So now what we're going to do is work on cleaning up the image just a little bit. So I'm actually going to go ahead and um, kind of merge all my layers together by hitting Control, Alt, Shift, and then E. That right here is going to basically just merge all these layers together and create a whole new layer. So that way we have a new layer to work on. And what I'm going to do here, I think the first thing we should do is maybe zoom in and see if there's any of these edges around her that need to be cleaned up. Now, her edges actually aren't that bad. Um, because I'm doing the painting effect, the edges aren't really going to affect this too much. But if you wanted to go in with your cloning brush, a little tiny brush here, and kind of clone around her you could but it might do more damage than good I know like I stopped talking when I'm trying to focus so I apologize like you can see here now this doesn't this doesn't match up now we gotta try to keep our lines matching up a little bit better when you're cloning um I don't think that her lines are too, too bad. Now in the original image, I did take my time and go around all her edges because at the end, I, I, did, I wasn't originally gonna do the painting at the end, but it was just so much fun and, and I just ended up leaving it like that. Now like this right here, this is all frizz and that could all be cloned over if you wanted it to. Get rid of all that frizz, bring it on down. And like that and then you want to go back in with your little smaller brush I know that when I'm whenever I've watched tutorial videos I hate sitting through cloning so I'm not going to sit here and be too tedious with you I mean my main my main purpose of doing this tutorial was just to show you the different tips and tricks that you can do for a composite 
and to basically show you the painting effect at the end. So I'm not going to be too tedious with this with you. If you would like a more in-depth video on cloning, let me know. Maybe, maybe that's something that I can do. But for the sake of not keeping you here all day long, we are just going to leave our lines the way that they are. I'm pretty happy with that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I think I'm going to go ahead, I'm happy, I'm going to go ahead and merge all of this together. I'm pretty happy with where everything is. I don't think I'm going to go back and create, correct anything really. So I'm going to merge all my layers so we can start clean. So now here's our composited image. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this again because I want to add some blur to the grass down here just a little bit. So I'm going to go up to filter, Kajian blur. I'm going to add like... Leaning in like an old lady again, yes. I'm going to add like, just like three pixels. Hit OK. I'm going to add my layer mask. Control I to invert it. So that way I can just paint the blur on where I want it. So using a white paintbrush, I, I really just want to kind of paint like the edges. Like maybe this line over here and down here and down here. And I want to leave the plane that she's standing on, like her plane right here. I want to leave that more in focus and mostly the flowers. I just kind of want to get the edges a little bit more. Um, I think that's pretty good. I think I'm, I think that's pretty good because I'm going to go in with my, um, one of my actions and oil, give it an oil painting effect. So I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to merge this. If you watch any of my other tutorials, you know that I love working on flat layers. So if I can work on a flat layer, I'm going to work on a flat layer. So back to a clean layer. Uh, the next thing we're going to do, this is where some of the actions come in. I do use some of my actions on here because I created these actions because I use them all the time. So I'm going to go in with my oil, oil painting action that I'm going to use on the back of the background of the whole image here. Why is it running so slow? I started my computer before I started this tutorial, so it shouldn't be running that slow. Alright, so I want to take my paintbrush with a white brush and paint it on. It's going to be really strong at first. I'm definitely going to lower the opacity, so don't panic. I'm going to go in, touch all these areas here, make sure I get all the edges, and then I'm going to go in with a smaller brush to get around her. I hope I'm talking loud enough. I'm trying not to yell when I'm recording these. And I try not to whisper, so I hope that you guys can actually hear me. If not, you'll probably have to wear headphones when you watch any of my tutorials. <laughs> okay, so if you look over here at your layer mask, you can see the black is what you have not painted. And I can see that I have quite a few big, well, little spots just randomly throughout the photo. So I'm going to just try to get some of those. Check them over here. They look pretty good. Like It looks like above her head we've got some. Over here we've got some. Alright, I think we've got it pretty good. I'm going to go back in with a black brush real quick. Small one just to go out of her edges to make sure that I didn't blur any of her. Um, down here on her dress, down on her basket. Okay, so now I'm going to drop this opacity just to like 50%. I don't want it to be too strong as before. That's after. Leave it at like 50%. Flatten it. We're good to go. Next action I'm going to run. I want to clean up her skin. So you can clean up her skin however you want, but I'm going to use the light skin from my bare skin set here because her skin's a little purple as you can't can see there. She doesn't really, her skin doesn't really match the whole of the image here. So with a white brush, now normally I would get in here and kind of tediously get her skin I don't want this tutorial to be too long. So with a white brush, I'm going to go in and paint over her skin. I know you're looking and you're thinking, like, what's, what are you doing? Like, I don't see anything. Trust me, you will notice it before and after. It's, I'm going to get some of her hair, too, because I want to bring in some, like, little highlights into her hair up there. And I want to get her arms. And... That's pretty good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zoom back out so I can show you here the difference. So before the action, pay attention to her skin, and this is after. It actually does brighten up her face a lot and change her skin tone. So I'm going to go in and actually I'm going to, 
Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna flatten this, and we're gonna go on to my next action that I think I'm gonna run is, I wanna sharpen it up, so I'm just gonna use my sharpening action. You can sharpen however you want. I use my sharpening action because I like to sharpen just certain areas. I don't wanna sharpen everything. So I'm gonna go in with a bigger brush, and I only wanna sharpen her. I don't wanna sharpen anything else in the photo. So, just by using a brush, I can select just what I want to sharpen, which would be just her. Okay, we'll merge that. And the next thing I am going to do, I'm trying to think what I'm forgetting here. You could go in and I could take out the blue in her dress. That's going to bother me. So I use my take out the blue hue. These are all from my Back to Basics set, by the way. The set that I use all the time. It's like my life. Go in here and see if I can get any of the blue out of her dress. Some of it's more like shadows than it is blue, but there is some blue in there that we can take out. So before, that's after. It does make it kind of bright white. But that's okay. I'm going to flatten it. I'm going to save it. Next. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to stop with the actions for now. And I want to add sun flare here. So I'm going to go to my enchanting light set. Now this set I work so hard on. And it's actually a really, it's like my best seller. I mean, it's I haven't had anything that has sold as well as these. And I love them. I use them all the time. They're awesome. So I'm going to use sun flare number nine here. Stretch it on out to fit your image, but I also want to overstretch it, and I'll show you why. We're going to hit the check mark, go up to screen, because I want the light to come right through here. So we're going to have to keep adjusting, adjusting the size until we can get the image to fit. Why? See, I don't want it so. Okay. So we want to pull it up here a little bit, keep pulling it down until it fits. Right there looks pretty good. Move it on over. Maybe just a little bit more. All right, just like that. All right, there looks pretty good. That's about where I want it. Hit the check mark, and now we got it where it looks like it's coming through the trees. Now, if you didn't want it to be this strong, you could go up and add a little bit of a blur to it, but I want to keep the rays that strong so I am going to leave it just like that for now. Now the next thing I want to do is actually edit the image. I want to add um, an overall like different effect and color to it. Now you could go in and you can do whatever you want. Uh, I want to flatten this first. I'm going to use one of my, I used one of my actions because that's just what I always use. I used the dreamy the dreamy film and matte from my lavish set. Hit play. I'll let it run. And I dropped it down to 50%. And I used this because it gave it kind of like a cartoony effect, I guess, sort of. Um, and then we can go in and we can flatten this. And okay. Now we have like the actual. The actual image if you just wanted to do a composite of course these lines down here are driving me crazy but mm. anyway when we had the painting effect now on to the painting effect if you just wanted to do a composite there's some tips and tricks on how to do it uh, hopefully you do it's a little bit more cleaner than mine but this tutorial is already like 20 minutes long so I'm trying to hurry up and finish I'm going to show you how to do the painted effect real quick and then we are done so go down here and duplicate your image and the first effect that I'm going to add, you're going to go up to Filter, Artistic, down to Watercolor. Now these filters, I don't know about your Photoshop, but on my Photoshop, these filters run so stinking slow. I want this to fit my screen so I can see it. Okay, so wait for it to load, and hopefully it loads faster than my battery dies. Okay, so here we go. This, um, I'm pretty sure that this setting is what it was set on when I did it couple of days ago so this should be the same settings and I like it so I'm not I'm not going to adjust any of the settings if you want to follow my settings the brush detail is at five shadow intensity none texture is at one click okay 
Now I'm gonna lower this opacity though. I don't want it quite that strong. I can't remember what I had it at. I think I had it at 50%. That looks about right. So I'm gonna keep it at 50%. I'm gonna merge this because we're gonna have to add another artistic layer. So go back, duplicate it again, hit okay. And then the next thing I'm going to add is go up to filter and I think noise, dust and scratches. All right, this is what I had it set on last time too. Radius at five, threshold at five, hit okay. Now, I believe I set this to soft light I dropped the opacity down to maybe 20, I'm going to say it was 20. Let's, oops, let's hit the before and the after. It was very slight. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that it was, I'm pretty sure that it was on 20. It might have even been 15, 20, 15, maybe it was 50. <laughs> I don't know. Um, let's go with 30, huh? Let's go with 30. You can adjust it however you want. It really just adds kind of like a more cartoony effect to it with the color. So before, after, go ahead and merge those layers. All right. Now, for the last effect, if you wanted to make it look like it was on a canvas type effect, this is what we're going to do last. Duplicate again. Hit OK. Back up to filter. I think it's render. Yep. Fibers. Here we go. Now, um, I don't think I had that too strong. It's this that you want to bring up because as you can see, it starts to look like, I mean, like the um, the texture on a canvas. That's what we're going for here. So you bring this up. Yeah, we don't want it to something more like that. Okay. Hit OK. Now we want to hit. What did I keep this on? I think I kept it on soft light. Yes. And now this I kept, I think, at 15%. Yes, 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 yes. Now you can see the lines here. The pro only problem with this is the very, well, I guess the top doesn't really show. The top tends to be, like, the edges tend to be a little bit more stronger. So if you have to hide that, you might have to stretch it out a little bit. But I'm okay with this. So that's how you get the canvas type effect. 15% is pretty good for me. I'm going to merge it together, and then I think I cropped this image. Come up here and hit um, crop. Whoops, we want our height to be, all right, we want a horizontal. So uh, I brought it all the way up here. I didn't want to crop out any of that, and I did like a crop of thirds. So what I did is make sure that this line here is in the center of her face. Hit the check mark. And there we go. I would say that we duplicated it pretty well, other than those pesky lines. I don't have those pesky lines in this image. It does show up a little bit in this image, but hey, you just got to work with it a little bit, but at least you've got the basics. This one looks like it is a little bit more painted than this one, so I probably did do 50% on that last one. Darn it. Well, you got the basics and you've got the steps, so all you need to do now is play around and experiment and have fun. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope that it wasn't too long for you, but it was just so much fun. I just had to show you. Have a great rest of your day and until the next tutorial, see, tutorial, <laughs> see you later.